Stoppuhr. Ready? Cool. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Wildside. Yeah, the Wildnet. The Wildside Network is an exhibition of the Wildside program and is an exhibition of 13 partner universities of the Kunstuniversität Linz. And uh, it has a lot of works. And we will uh, run you through the exhibition uh, in 15 minutes. So let's go. Let's go, yeah. Um, so here um, we see the first work of the exhibition. As many other works, uh, this, this has been produced during the time of the lockdown. Uh, so those are uh, students uh, that have been dealing, uh, working at home during the last semester. So um, this work is from Shiva Park from the ba Santa Barbara University and it's called Uncertain Faces. It's a very complex installation, uh, interactive, where uh, the audience can um, contribute with their face to, the, to a data-driven visualization of the, of, um, in the 3D space. Uh, those are all faces from a database and their characteristics are analyzed and then mix, matched up together. Um, yeah, so we are happy then to introduce the second work, um, which is from Paris. Wit, Paris 8, and here we have the artist to, to introduce it. Hello, I'm Laura Suspilla, Canadian, and we are from Paris 8 in Paris. Well, we are from Paris 8 in France. Um, Our application Sharky Sharky is a is an application augmented reality, and through the um, uh, iPad we can see the real world and the aquatic aquatic world emerges together. <laughs> yeah, so the next work uh, is behind us. The next work is uh, one of the Holy Toads uh, by Sebastian Komaneshu from the Cinetic uh, University in Bucharest. It's a star like structure that is uh, contemplating the idea of like atoms of, of macro and micro structures on Earth. And it's an interactive piece if you touch the ends of the stars. You see that the pattern is changing. And it's f asking this question of how much does our action on Earth actually count? And how do we fit into the macro structures on, on Earth? Here we have a work from Unnur Andrea Einarsdottirt from uh, the Trondheim uh, Academy of Fine Art. Uh, it's, a, it's a video work with the title The Sophistic Battle, which is a, a very nice and funny critique of the, the culture of attention that we have nowadays. Uh, in the video you see, as you, as you see now, two uh, women which are fighting with their selfie to get the best position to take a selfie in a, in a landscape. Um, and yeah, it's a funny critique on how we uh, want to show our, uh, ourselves off a lot. Let's go. So the second work, or the next work, is uh, from the collective Hamistagan, and they are from the Alto University. That's an immersive installation. That come from inside. It's very dark here, and it's based on a technique of laser and laser projectors uh, to create this. Um, immersive atmosphere that uh, deals with data and the ways that data are gathered and, and manipulated and used for uh, specific companies. So it's a bit of a critical uh, installation. They are scraping data from the, from the internet and they are um, using it and embedding it into this, um, this dome-like uh, structure. Um, and now we go to the, to the next work of the exhibition. It's also from the same university as Hamistakan. This is organically sourced sound by Bailey Polkenhorn from the Alto Media Lab in Finland. Um, this is a kind of sonic poem that deals with the relationship between the composer and nature. And Bailey actually um, plugged a lot of microphones onto plants so visitors can interact with it. And basically the plant is generating sound or making sound and, and making a composition. So you can knock on the plant, you can touch the leaves, and yeah, as you see, this little hammer is also generating a kind of uh, basic pattern. Yeah, these two works were from artists who could uh, luckily join us in the setup, and, uh, and also Shark, Shark, as you saw before. This one is another work from uh, Santa Barbara University, which deals a lot with data visualization. Um, 
The, um, the artist is called Mark Hirsch and this is the title is Portrait of a Nation and it's a visualization of the songs which were sung in the Black Lives Matter protests uh, which is a very recent thing uh, so um, again those are uh, it's seen that those are uh, artists which are dealing with a contemporary uh, situation and it's there is also an audio part that uh, that can be experienced the next work is already again from per, per, Paris Leeds, and then here we have the artist Aurelien that can introduce you the work. Hi, I'm Aurelien Bell from uh, Paris Light University, and this is my project uh, Light, which is a VR experiment, virtual reality experiment, in which you have to explore a uh, grim, dark city and uh, find and bring light to this city to make it more relaxing and more friendly. So uh, I'll make a quick demonstration for you. some spheres of light and we have to, to bring them to some pedestals and then when we put it on the pedestal the world transforms and brightens so and you have to there are five zones you know and in the last zone the whole sky transforms and tears up into a blue sky and uh, so it's quite an opti optimistic and uh, uh, application. <laughs> Thank you. We're very happy that Aurelia was able to join us here. The next work Darwin is going to introduce. Yeah, the next work is from, from the uh, Spanish University, uh, the Politecnica University of Valencia. Uh, that's sadly one of the works who, uh, we couldn't show because of the uh, current measurements uh, against the pandemic and that's a, that's a prototype you see here the documentation it's a, it's a jacket which has to deal with grief and, and sorrow and basically and it's connected to some plants again <clears throat> while uh, the idea of that is basically when somebody is in grief uh, and wears the jacket a, a person would hug him or her and then the jacket activates uh, the, the watering system of a plant and the plant represents uh, a lost uh, relative of this person so through the hugging and through the being close to each other the plant can grow um, and yeah there is another work from the Polytechnica which uh, which yes yeah, we cannot show but uh, we are happy that we at least have the documentation and the, the next work here you see this is also very physical uh, that's um, maybe from this side is better to, to press because uh, it's, it's a video installation with two projectors and two marble blocks. They are very, very heavy. Um, the, the title is uh, Nothing is uh, Known and Everything is Imagined. From the quote, uh, you see it written there as if they were actually um, subtitles from a movie. Nulla si sa tutus imagine is a quote from, uh, from a film from Fellini. And it is a lot with the materiality of the of the water, the fluidity contraposed to the to the hard uh, marble in there. But also it deals with the fluidity of the of the filmic medium. And again, here Fellini and the um, oniric landscape uh, comes in. Next, we have a very beautiful, very multi-layered artwork by. Uh, it's actually a group artwork by. Uh, it's called Black Box um, by the University of Brno, and it's uh, also it's, it has been uh, produced in the time of Corona, and they basically asked students to make visual diaries. So we have a lot of visual material here that then they uh, put into this uh, AI curator that which they designed, which basically uh, gives us an idea of how an AI would sort images. So there are algorithms that uh, put them together in different ways than a human curator might, uh, might be doing. So we can click around on the project. Now of course this uh, has an error. So your confidence is better and then it will load the different images. Next. Yeah. And the next one is the is the video projection we have behind here. Uh, it's called the Bundle of Echoes, um, and it's a work from Mina Pace from the uh, Trondheim University. Again, we had another student from the Trondheim University 
uh, in the back with the selfie stick button. Uh, this is a work which is very, very, uh, for me, very impressive um, because uh, it's a video which deals with, uh, with the problematic of deaf people. Um, and the ways that they uh, encounter nature. So if you if you are um, you have some uh, blindness or your vision is impaired, um, they you have to use other senses to, to get in touch with which something that is very very common nature that we experience. And uh, it, it's a documentary which analyzes the way that uh, specific groups of uh, impaired people get in touch with plants and nature. So it goes beyond a bit the. The idea of uh, the human to, to merging into the ecosystem. Next, this actually uh, pairs very well with the other work. We have another work by the Universitat Politecnica di Valencia. It's a work by Natasha Cabellos called The Affection Laboratory of a Migrant Plant. And she has also been thinking about the relationship between humans and technology. And she made this very beautiful kind of visual poem that is also supposed to be a bigger installation, but luckily we can still show the documentation. Um, where basically a robotic hand is caressing uh, a plant and uh, remembers, uh, well, shows memories of a plant uh, of forgotten times. Next, we're going into a very different direction. This is uh, Marco Eleno's work, Transparent Perceptron. It is kind of a juxtaposition of this, this topic of nature because he's dealing with a very artificial or man-made systems. He's thinking here about decision-making processes of artificial neural networks. So it's an interactive work where you basically see the process of how an artificial neural network makes decision and the different layers of that. And we see that very beautifully visualized here. <clears throat> the next works uh, uh, from the Naba University. I forgot to mention the, the, the work with the marble cubes before that we saw is also from the same university. This is a video installation from Marco Antelmi, and it's entitled Teoria di Topi. Um, as you see here, you have three uh, three monitors featuring uh, different contents. is a, is a work that becomes that is has been produced from a documentary movie that the artist himself made, and it, it deals with um, with um, the uh, uh, two two different topics. One is the um, one is the, the fact that the um, the Italian police uh, were actually taking out smartphones from migrant people, uh, the, um, which were held into the detention camps, and to make them kind of imp imp uh, to block them to communicate with the outer world and get to know about their condition. And on the same side, he, he made a few interviews with people working in data centers and also with people working in data centers. Uh, there is a very big data center in Italy which basically uh, distributes all the, all the internet content from, from Italy. So he makes this parallel between the migrants whose uh, possibility to use technology is blocked and ourselves, we are, which we are not fully empowered to uh, have uh, technology under our fingers basically and control it properly. Which this is again a very beautiful bridge to the next work, which is uh, again a group project by uh, a group from Aarhus University. It's called Cat Monte, and it's a very beautiful aesthetic of like Windows 95 uh, card game. So uh, you can uh, enter your Instagram username and then you can play Solitaire, which is a card game, and then something takes over. So it's kind of a card game with a twist that also asks this question of like who is in power uh, in the virtual world. Here we have the last, the last work of uh, this room. We have two more works outside. This is the, the work Arama from Makoto Morishita from the Yamas University. It's a very uh, long tradition of this partnership between uh, the Kunstuni and uh, Yamas. Uh, the work of Makoto is, a, is an, a very funny AR application. You can see it here, um, where basically we can try to point it at Yulia. Uh, through several effects, you can actually um, uh, manipulate the image of the of the other person, uh, making I don't know a rainbow. So you see Julia spinning in multiple colors, and it's a very funny way to approach each uh, each each one body. And now she's spinning, and so on. Yeah. Now we go outside for a second because we have a work in public space. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a uh, work by a group of uh, students from the Politecnico di Milano. 
it's called Feltre, and it's actually about uh, urbanism. So this, these students uh, are, I think, in their first year of uh, architecture and ur urbanism, and they have been thinking about tactical urbanism and what kind of um, yeah, kind of objects or interventions could uh, rethink and help us kind of explore the possibilities of social distancing in, in public space. So as you see, there are like kind of little spacers on benches, there are kind of playful stripes on the street, which is all um, well meant to encourage us to playfully um, well keep social distancing. Yeah. yeah, and always from the same university and with a very similar um, Content. So there is a second installation in the public space that we are gonna uh, see now. So uh, as we see here from uh, from the outside, this is another work which deals with the uh, with the idea of public space in the time of lockdown. Uh, the work is I stop here from Emanuele Cantò, uh, always uh, again from the NABA, the new Academy of Fine Arts in, in Milano. Uh, during the lockdown, he was uh, working as a as a food delivery uh, rider, and he was uh, going around the city of Rome, uh, which was empty, fully empty, and uh, basically what he did was to capture uh, images from the, from the uh, security cameras in this, this is Piazza Navona, like one of the most touristic places in Italy, so um, yeah, and he was alone, and he was the, the only, the, the last man standing in this pandemic time, and then you, you see here the police, um, yeah, so it's a very, very nice video, it's way too short time to, to show it in this moment, but now we approach the next the next work, which is this red gazebo here, um, yeah, this is what we meant before with the yeah. with the with the work from the Polytechnico. They uh, there's another group of students which have been um, thinking about social distancing in a public space, and they came up with the idea of creating these gazebos where uh, people can interact with each other at a safe distance. Um, so if me and Julia will have a a meeting in the park or in a in a courtyard. We will meet here and have a conversation, but still keeping the same uh, safety distance. Yeah, cool. And now we have approach the last the last work of this section. And is actually in the cellar of the exhibition. And here we go. So please follow me. We have to go downstairs. That's a sound installation. It's called the uh, Darknet Spa, and it's from the same art, uh, artist who did the selfie stick battle that we saw before, um, Andrea Uno, Uno Andrea, to be precise. Uh, this is also an immersive space, and then she proposed um, an installation which deals with the darknet, the the hidden layer of the internet, and proposes a, a meditation routine that one can experience while lying on this. Uh, on this uh, yoga mat. Yeah, the environment is very loud, and I feel much more relaxed now. Uh, what about you? Me too. Yeah. So this was the part. I hope you enjoyed our little tour, and now we will give the word to Fabrizio La Mocha upstairs. Hello, uh, welcome to our exhibition from the Interface Cultures uh, Master Students here at the uh, Ars Electronica Festival 2020. Uh, we are part of the exhibition of the Kunstuniversität uh, Linz, uh, the exhibition uh, Wild State. Our exhibition is called uh, State uh, of Intimacy and is presenting the, the student projects uh, from, uh, from this academy year, uh, which uh, uh, in different kind of formats, we also have uh, we have this uh, kind of like a classic uh, 
exhibition space. Then we also have like other kind of formats like uh, the Agora space, which is like a more like multidisciplinary space where we're gonna have also talks or performances. We also have a online uh, online exhibition. And uh, now let's uh, introduce you a little bit uh, to the kind of like uh, content of our of our exhibition. So uh, welcome into our the first room of our of our exhibition. Here we have uh, different projects, different mediums, uh, different tools that the students are using, and also like we uh, we are going to present you the variety of like different students. They come from different countries. So here we have, for example, our first uh, subject, Juan Linares, who is uh, uh, presenting his work uh, all at once. Would you like to introduce a little bit like what is like the technology that you're using and also like what is your project about? Uh, yes, sure. So it's more about like it reflects on the space that lies between the image we are exposed like every day. So the images that we are consuming every day. So it consists on different short clips uh, that somehow try to make a visual composition, visual rhythm on, yeah reflect on these images that appear between what we are seeing every day. Thank you, Juan. So we also have a different kind of other kind of like other kind of projects. Uh, for example, Sofia Braga. She has uh, four different projects that he's presenting. In uh, uh, on the one hand, she has a, a video a video installation with a smartphone and a project that she recorded, and she's also presenting other videos and projects through this uh, router exhibition made uh, through open source uh, hardware. Hello, Sofia. Hello. Hello. Would you like to talk a little bit about the four projects that you are presenting? Yeah, so as Fabrizio said, these are router exhibitions. And uh, with your phone, you can connect to one of the networks. I stored myself, welcome to my channel or waiting room. And once you are uh, connected, you can uh, watch the videos. And there uh, is a series of videos that investigates uh, um, uh, appropriation, improper use of online content, and uh, uh, online nihilism. And the uh, nice things of the routers is that they are offline, so every time you connect to one of these networks, uh, you cannot um, uh, go online and watch, for instance, uh, your email or Facebook, so you are completely disconnected from your online uh, life. and. Uh, you are totally into the project. <laughs> yeah, Sofia identifies herself as a cyber stalker as well. So she's uh, very much related. She, she's very interested also in this idea of like appropriation of like and, uh, and social media, and uh, also like you have this very interesting project also that is related to like. I like to disrupt the social uh, media platforms and for instance I made one short movie for Instagram stories so I like to use these social networks in a way in which the user would not expect so in a in, in improper use of the social media platforms I would say. Nice, thank you. Uh, and here for example right next to Sofia we have the, the project from uh, Mario Romera who is right here and uh, Mario is a uh, has this also very interesting project that also uses uh, uh, open source uh, hardware, and uh, he's very interested in, the, in, in activism and uh, politics and uh, reflecting on the ideas of democracy and consensus. And uh, he created this kind of like game, and he's also like your 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 medium is kind of like participatory design somehow. Could you please explain your project a little bit? Yeah, so it's a research project in which uh, I investigate a bit different ways to agree collectively in a digital medium, especially when these days it's uh, kind of the most used uh, uh, method. And yeah, I propose a new interface to be use the phones and the digital devices in a more uh, collective way and not so individual. Um, yeah, it's uh, about direct democracy, consensus making, and a bit a funny way of uh, interacting with each other to agree and discuss different topics. Thank you, Mike. And uh, now we're going to show you like, all the different kind of like uh, mediums and tools that our students are using uh, for their project. For example, we have uh, Balin from uh, Hungary, an uh, interface culture student as well, who is uh, presenting a, a VR project, and he's very much interested in the idea of 
of, uh, of rituals and uh, afterlife and he reflects aesthetically in his projects through a uh, virtual reality environment. Could you please uh, talk a little bit and show yes. us a little bit about your project? Yeah, yeah so this is an experiment, a VR project, and this is all about uh, uh, some side doc documentation which is reflecting to the uh, Psydex subculture and also um, shows how entities look like and how they are uh, exacting in this uh, generated uh, reality, let's say. Here you can see the, the inner world of the virtual reality and the, the entities and then I made a teleport uh, where you can uh, easily uh, find your way and try to connect to these entities while uh, using the controllers to teleport yourself in this inner, inner world in the glitchy way. And we have another virtual reality project. Uh, this project is from uh, our, uh, our student uh, Eva. She, uh, she creates also uh, virtual reality environments for uh, for for uh, for 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 making uh, parties now during the lockdown, uh, Eva she is also uh, a DJ and a music producer, and she's part of also of the Sound Campus. So now because of the of the lockdown, there was no possibility to uh, to meet together and to party all together. So she decided to do this uh, virtual uh, reality environment where people can uh, join through internet and party all together by using the, this virtual reality environment. So she's supposed to be on the stage, which is right there, you can see her. But now it's a little bit too early, you have to wait, because I think it's at night. And she's also part of the Sound Campus, so you can also like check the program and, uh, uh, and join online. And now we're going to the next room where we are going to present a, a project from an exchange student from uh, France called Amir Dussel. Like, uh, basically, it's a dance that is inspired by the dervish or the violin dancer. And this concept of dance actually is more about um, flying the spirit. The more he turns around, the more the spirit is getting high by to meet the spirit. So that was the first inspiration of this project. And basically, it's like a series of projects that I started in France at uh, the Ecole Supérieure Dynamics. And one of the main projects actually was about um, how I can create like a way environment through this kind of movement into the space. So I started to create like only one dancer, and the other time I created like more dancers, like this uh, version of the project. And basically here we can see that there is like six sculptures and each one of them they are like somehow following the main dancer in the middle and at some point uh, they are like changing the sequence of the dance in 10 seconds so uh, the idea here was actually to create like a performance between the dancers and somehow like uh, and also like this is part of my master's research which is called like the kinemania and Kinemania is like the title that I invented, which is defining uh, my obsession about movements and about kinetics in general. Because I work a lot with movements uh, as a medium to create some sort of uh, narration or some sort of uh, poetic environment. And uh, somehow I see how this like interacting with the audience uh, as well. So yeah, this project is like floating spaces and it's, uh, as you can see, like, this is like a sequence of five minutes uh, performance that can change like each 10 seconds in a different uh, kind of movement or like direction. And as you can see, like the speed itself is changing the form of the sculpture and so on. So, thanks a lot. And now we're going into our last room. This is a bit more of an intimate room where we are going to present you also three projects. One of the main projects from this year is a collaboration between many students that uh, they gathered together during the lockdown and uh, they kept communicating with each other and they created a blog and a collective together and now they are presenting their project. 
So this is project is Coppola by a group of students. Not all of them are present. But here we have uh, Smirna, we have Indiara, Carla, and Yosune, and maybe they want to introduce you the project a little bit more. Yes, Vocalens, it's a growing digital archive of international media artists that were dealing with the lockdowns in various geographical locations all over the planet. So starting from March 15th, which marks the day of the lockdown in Austria, we created uh, an idea to post our artist diaries either every day or every week, and in that way stay connected to various artists and our friends around the globe. Uh, therefore, we created this website and interface where everyone is imagined as a remote island, but still being able to post their ideas and remain active and creative during the entire lockdown. So now we have this website, which was online since March, where we were posting all of our works daily or weekly. And now we also created this interface, which serves as a, actually as a mouse, uh, which, which you can interact with the website and uh, you can click and discover the diaries and enter the intimate space of each of the artists. So uh, we had artists joining from all over the world, from the United States, from Peru, from Brazil, also artists from Austria, from Italy, for example, which was in a complete lockdown. Uh, we have um, uh, 15 participating artists and this project was started as an initiative of actually interface culture students, which make the majority of uh, the artists. Um, one of the first joining collectives, it was Collective Lumen, that started doing documentary reportages from Italy as soon as it entered the lockdown. But we have various approaches to this, since people that are participating are all media artists with different backgrounds and different ways of rendering their daily reality. Uh, and the challenges they were facing during the isolation and lockdown. Of course, this is a project that aims to continue working because we still are in these uncertain times and we don't know what, what are the next steps either for Austria or other countries. So we want to have more artists joining and participating in this way of staying connected in this digital world. Thank you, Smirna. Congratulations for your project. And now we're going to go into the next project from uh, Vanessa B, or a student from Italy, and also a professor in Italy who is presenting a, a, an installation made out of like different pieces that create a narrative together. And maybe you are going to present this better than me. Okay. This is an artwork in between uh, bioart and the interactive documentary and is made by three sections. The first one is this kind of video uh, that is uh, in a way the end of uh, a documentary, a 15 minutes documentary that is about me that is uh, becoming uh, through a process, uh, a scientific process, uh, photosynthetic. <laughs> so this is the, the, the goal of this artwork. And uh, here there is an, uh, a VR section, maybe you can uh, Maybe someone can can help me with the VR, so so we can show how to dress and the yes. So you can. and there is an immersive experience. You can feel yourself as a plant that is inside the earth. the gene of uh, some algae, and then uh, through a process uh, similar to CRISPR, we, and through a vector, we put, uh, we, I, I, um, I dress this cream becoming uh, photosynthetic. Mm -hmm. Now in this room we also have uh, yeah. the last project from Indiara, who is actually <laughs> laying down with the VR headset on. <laughs> 
Yes, my project is based on this research about the, how we are able to memorize information and also through transmit information about the uh, connotation of the human faces and I decided to develop this uh, ancient device that takes inspiration from uh, an old device from uh, an ancient tribe of Congo Republic that is called Lukasa and this is a mysterious uh, object that works like a memory device and also a mnemonic device and in this society of the time, there were these fibers that they were, co uh, they were called men of memory. They, they were using this device for telling stories about the society. And so I decided to develop also my personal device, taking inspiration from that. And I will show you something of how it's working. And actually, thanks to this device, you can also build your personal portrait that um, in this uh, project I also uh, realized this data set that is collecting basically information about some human faces that are belongs to my personal experience so I want to give the opportunity to the audience also to build uh, their own faces using the data set that I give to them so for example I can delete now the screen you can move through the canvas. You can change the element. So you can also see which kind of element I put inside for my data set. And now I would like to show you our last artwork that is an artwork that actually happens in a public space. So here we have the Nomi Sasaki, or Peruvian Japanese uh, student, who created this super cute uh, micro micro theater of puppets. Would you like to please introduce us to your project? This is a micro puppet theater uh, performed just for one person per time. It takes three minutes and a half. And in this puppet theater, uh, you can animate part of the scenography with your biometric data. For example, if you put your finger here, the, the sensor can read your habit and with this data we move the waves uh, from the ocean. Uh, this is a sound sensor and when you blow here in this part, you can create a wind. And these are photoresistors that depending how close to, the, to them you are, you are making uh, the stars uh, blink. I want to show you the, how the sensors work and how they move. But you know, can you show, give me a little example of how? Yes. Because he can. Uh, put the there are these tiny puppet here. We can take it out from the box. Can you show it to the camera? Yes. And it's just a tiny puppet <laughs> that goes to the ocean to fish. Ah, and the lights are turning on, so I can, you can peep there. <laughs> I think you're doing you know? So, depending on the biometric data part of the scenography is animated. So, that's basically it. It's last but uh, not least. We also have a, a lot of program online and uh, also in the Agora. Uh, every day, check uh, on the Wild State website because we have a, a different schedule. And uh, please welcome, uh, you are more than welcome to come uh, to check our, our exhibition and our program. Thank you so much.